This isn't a perception. This isn't an opinion. It's, it's true. <laughs> this is the fact, Ajahn. This is not my opinion. It's the fact. Yes, Venerable, I understand that you believe very strongly this is the fact. <laughs> no, 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 I don't believe it. It is the fact. So that very fixity of view, this is... Uh, 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 a, a, a major obstacle to us. The, the mind latches on to a, a view and says, I'm right, it shouldn't be this way. We should cook the carrots like this. <laughs> we should park the mower like that. <laughs> we should clean the vihara like this. Yeah. Yeah, we should uh, have the, uh, <clears throat> the times for, for the work periods like that. And we, we latch on to a particular structure or an idea or a perception and we make it mine, me and mine, and then when anything comes along to challenge that, then we feel threatened. And uh, that it shouldn't be this way. Uh, that anybody who thinks differently from me is wrong. They might be good people, but they're wrong. <laughs> so this is a, a, a very significant and important area of practice. So the, the going forth of Samanira Deepako yesterday was an inspiring occasion. Someone uh, takes on the the ochre robe of a samana and makes a commitment to train in this way. But this is also an example for everybody else. The, the, it's like they say the, the wedding is one thing, but the marriage is another. You know, the, the ceremony and the, the, the gesture of commitment is one thing, but it's more the moment-to-moment -moment renunciation that makes a difference. And along with the renunciation of, of celibacy, of going without money, or living according to a routine, <coughs> The, it's uh, equally important to pay attention to the inner renunciation, recognizing where the mind latches on to views and opinions, judgments, perceptions, and says, I'm right, you're wrong, <laughs> and takes that to be an absolute fact. <clears throat> As the, the Buddha said in his teachings here, I am is a conceiving. Yeah, and all conceiving is a conceiving. It's something that's brought into being. That's a... The, we use the English word conceit for that I am feeling. In Pali, it's called asmimana, the, the conceit of I am. It says, all conceit, conceivings are, a, they are like a cancerous tumor. They're like an, an illness. They're like a poisoned arrow. They're alien. They are a cause of agitation. So, <clears throat> this is dramatic language that the Buddha uses. <laughs> so, uh, it's there to encourage us. And the Buddha was very gifted at using words to help get our attention. To say, yeah, all conceivings uh, are a, a cancerous tumor. They're a poisoned arrow, a dart. They are a, a, they're foreign, they're alien. It gets our attention to, to help us to see whenever the mind says, well, I think, or you know, in my opinion, <laughs> or uh, what I want, uh, if you ask me, that we then uh, notice that I and me and mine, this is my stuff, my space, <laughs> my things, my project, that we notice all the times the mind creates I and me and mine, and then uh, we, uh, we send a flag up, we put up a flag saying, watch this, pay attention, pay, pay close attention, because as soon as there's I or me or mine in, the, in our thoughts, and, and that's taken as a solid and fixed reality, you can be sure that dukkha, suffering, will follow very, very closely behind, <laughs> if not be there right at that time. And that the more that we are able to let go of self-view, the more we're able to see that no matter how much I think this is right, it is just an opinion. No matter how much I think this is wrong, it is just an opinion. It's my perception. Then by allowing that extra um, space, by looking at <coughs> our thoughts, our opinions, our moods in, uh, uh, with that kind of uh, space around them, giving them a bit more room, then we find we're able to, to live in a far more balanced way within ourselves and in relationship to other people. Also, just not in terms of judging the, the world outside alone, but also judging our, our, own, our own moods, Yeah. I'm, I've really got it together. I'm, you know, everything is great. You know, I'm, really, I'm, I'm really in a good space. That's also an I am. Right? Uh, I'm hopeless. I'm depressed. It's all falling apart. I'm useless. I'm a total 
Yeah. <clears throat> All I'm doing is occupying space here. Yeah. I'm a spare part in the universe. That's what I am. That's also an I am. So in exactly the same way, you bring up the flag to notice. Oh, this is just another conceiving. Not to be believed in, not to be uh, clung to. And that uh, uh, as we bring attention to those habits of, of identification, of, of clinging, and we learn to see our opinion, no matter how convincing or how well backed up with data, <laughs> witnesses, <laughs> uh, tradition, it's still just an opinion, it's still just a perception, then we find a tremendous freeing of the heart. We are able to live much more contentedly and peacefully with, uh, with everyone. Sorry for those few reflections for this morning.